Okay, uh, I'll get started. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Christian, and uh, as you can see from my talk, uh, what I'm going to do is build a chatbot live on stage with the sole purpose of just showing everyone that chatbots are actually just web APIs and they're actually really simple. So uh, what kind of chatbot am I going to build? Uh, this one's just going to be really simple. It's going to be, it's going to allow us to find out about the agenda of what's going on at the conference uh, for the next couple of days. Um, and here's just some of the technologies that we'll be using. So um, I'm just going to be writing some C-sharp code using the Microsoft bot framework. Um, and the bot framework is going to manage all the conversations and replying to the users and stuff like that. Um, and I'll be using one of Microsoft's cognitive services, uh, Lewis, to do all of my natural language processing. And it'll be deployed to Azure, and then I'll chat with it in Skype. So uh, not to waste any more time, I'll just get straight into the code. So I've just got a, uh, a template that is available on the, on the bot framework website. And this just is basically just an, a regular web API project with some NuGet packages added in as well. And I've also added in, uh, as my data store, I'm kind of simulating an API call with just some JSON here. So first thing we need is a class to, uh, class to model our agenda. I'm just going to call this agenda talk. I'm going to use a bunch of templates just to speed things up. So yeah, so there's just our agenda talk. Everything in the bot framework has to be serializable. So every time you make a request to and from the bot framework, everything gets sent uh, back to Microsoft. Uh, up to Microsoft and then back to you. Uh, so here's our model, and then we need some way of searching this model. And uh, this one is just one big template because all it actually is is just uh, some link that looks through uh, looks through that JSON file for things like what talk is on next, what talk is on next. Um, so I won't really go into the, this one much. And from here, the main the main thing with the bot is uh, conversations are built on dialogues. Uh, so we'll just create a class for that. Uh, this also needs to be serializable. Um, and we're going to inherit from Lewis dialog um, because that allows us to get all of the, the NLP stuff for free. And I'm actually just going to new up my agenda search service because there's a bug in the bot framework because it's quite new. And uh, the dependency injection stuff hasn't been quite fixed yet. And the, fi the, first, uh, the first interaction we're going to have with our bot is when it doesn't understand what you say. So um, responding to user's input is uh, just the case of taking this context object and sending a message back to them. And these are just strings, because it's just text. So uh, if we don't understand what someone said to the bot, we're, gonna, we're just going to say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Ask me, uh, I should say, when is. And then we, we, have a, we have a call here just to tell our bot to wait for the user's next message. Uh, and add some more functionality. So, uh, these are actually just a bunch of helper methods to, because we're going to be doing the same sort of thing over and over. So someone asks a question, we're going to get the talks and send them all back. So we're just encapsulating all that, uh, all those methods together. So in here, we're just uh, searching through our talks. And if we get some forming our response, and in this case, we're doing it in the, in the form of a thumbnail card that allows us to uh, put, all, put all the similar data for a talk together. And it displays nice in different channels, sort of like in Facebook Messenger or Skype, it'll show differently. Uh, so. Oh, sorry, same one again. Uh, these methods are actually quite similar to the none, the none method uh, that we've got above, but it handles talks that are happening now and talks that are happening next. So we're just, again, interrogating our search service and then passing, uh, passing the reply back to the user and waiting for another message. It's just, in a, just an event loop. Um, and then we could do things that are slightly more interesting. So. We can uh, get talks by the speaker name or by the talk name. Um, and Lewis provides this uh, ability to extract entities that we've tagged that I'll show a bit later. And we can use that just directly in our bot code. We, if you've given us a speaker name, we can just use it then to search for something. And I'll show kind of a bit more how that works in a bit. And the last thing is that we can get talks at a specific time. Um, and again, Lewis provides 
uh, the natural language processing for, for time and being able to convert that to an actual uh, daytime object for us. So that, uh, that saves us a lot of sort of boilerplate code or NLP style code that we'd have to write. Um, and this is our dialogue about how do we hook, hook everything up or a HTTP request uh, turns up, how do, we, how do we pass it onto our dialogue? And it's actually, it's actually pretty simple. There's a, there's a controller that's already provided for you. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, but I'm just going to add a constructor. And this is just a factory method for making my dialogues. And the factory method is just going to create a new, a new agenda dialogue every time. I'm just going to replace all of this code with this one line that says, when the, when the activity comes in, uh, use my factory to create a dialogue and send the activity to the dialogue. And that's all it's doing. And then my dialogue will handle the rest of the code, uh, the rest of the interaction with the user. And the last thing is all the dependency injection stuff. So um, this is just really just all web API and autofact stuff. It's apart from this line here. Um, it doesn't really have anything to do with the bot framework at all. So I guess that the, the point is, is all this stuff is actually just web API code, but your, the way you're sending your responses back are slightly different. Um, and then from here, I would just literally right click and publish to Azure. I've already actually done it, so I wasn't sure how good the Wi-Fi was going to be, so I wanted to have it deployed and ready. Uh, but before that, I want to show you guys how, uh, how Lewis works. So you would you go to lewis.ai and create a new uh, create create a new app, and then you can say uh, my intent for what's on now is going to be called now, and you say what's on now, um, and we just had a few more. Uh, so the idea is, is uh, with the natural language processor, you give it a few cases, and then it can start uh, being a bit more clever for you. And uh, a similar thing for getting speakers. Ah, sorry, there's something I've missed. Uh, for that, we, we actually want an entity. So create a speaker name. And then we'd add a uh, uh, what we just saw before. Bye. And we could just we could just select this and say it's an entity and submit that and we do that over and over and it kind of uh, once we've got a few use cases Lewis will start understanding what uh, how the patterns of these sentences work and it will start actively extracting those things for us uh, so that we don't have to train it on every possible way of saying like what time is this person speaking or something like that um, and from there we can just go to the bot framework website just basically fill in their form to register a bot. We give it a, as I said, it's just a web API uh, endpoint. So we just give it the endpoint of that, of where our bot is deployed, and we're, and we're good to go. We can, um, I've actually already done that. Um, and you can, from there, you can just hook it up to all these other channels. And I've, uh, I've already hooked my bot up to Skype, so I'll just give it a, show a quick demo to show it actually does work. The agenda is a little bit old because when I extracted all the stuff, there, there was some stuff still missing. But hopefully this works. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm going to try one more. So. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, the, the output is kind of the same all the time because we wrote those, uh, I wrote those helper methods to, um, to make it really easy for us to just keep giving the same output. Um, and that's essentially it. That's uh, the, I guess the, the takeaway is, is writing chatbots is virtually no different to just writing web APIs. And getting off the ground is really easy with the, the bot framework and Lewis and all the, uh, a lot of the other cognitive services that Microsoft are providing. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about chatbots or getting started with that, come give me, uh, come speak to me later. All right, thanks. <laughs>